Hello everyone, this is Zibo and welcome to today's Hongkai Star Rail video. So in today's Hongkai Star Rail video, we're going to run through an old series on my channel and that is none other than how worthy is XXX potentially. So in case you guys haven't been following me, this series is basically a hero review series where I talk about the different aspects of the unit, analyze whether or not the unit will be good in the current meta game and whether or not the unit is worthy of your premium currency investments in the game itself. So today's star of the show is none other than the upcoming coming erudition unit general Jingyuan and in today's video we are going to analyze whether or not Jingyuan is worthy of your investment based on the different information that was released in the closed beta testing in the CN server release as well as my own game knowledge about the game and without further ado let us start today's video so this will be the table of content for today firstly we will talk about the skills the stats basically the numbers of the unit then we'll talk about the story for this character itself and then we'll recommend some relic and light cone compositions for Jingyuan and then team building recommendations based on the different units that are currently in the pool and then a unit versus light cone banner comparison for those of you guys who have slightly limited budget and is not sure whether or not to invest in the unit banner or the light cone banner for Jingyuan itself then we'll end off this video with some final conclusions on our end so just some disclaimers, Jingyuan hasn't been officially released into the game at the point of release of this video. So we will be analyzing his kit based on CBT information as well as already released CN info from the CN server site. There might be some changes to his kit on official release so do take note on that. And this is my first attempt at the series for the Hoyoverse. So feel free to offer your opinions as well as potential improvements for this series moving forward in the comment section down below. And lastly, if you like the video or how I present the information in this video do remember to like and subscribe in order to see more and with that let us analyze how worthy is Jingyuan potentially. Jingyuan is the Arbiter General of the Divine Foresight for Xianzhou Fulo and contrary to his nonchalant looking nature he is a very meticulous person with his work and often pays great attention to every little details to prevent unexpected results. Due to his meticulous ruling, Shenzhou has been at great peace for a very long time and he is also more commonly known as the Closed Eyes General in Shenzhou itself. Jingyuan is a lightning erudition unit specializing in AoE damage and he summons a lightning lord to aid him in battle. His lightning lord gains attack counts based on his basic attack and skill usage in order to do massive single target damage while dealing some AoE damage in the meantime. So for his tracers itself, we have the three tracers. Number one, we have Battalia Crush. If the Lightning Lord attack count is greater or equal to six in a turn, its critical damage increases by 25% for the next turn. And for the second trace, we have the at the start of the battle, he immediately regens 15 energy, which allows him to use his ultimate more frequently. And the last trace is none other than War Marshal, which allows him to increase his own crit rate by 10 percent for two turns after using a skill okay so if you talk about his stats distribution at level 80 his hp is 1164 attack is 698 485 for defense and 99 for speed so comparing across the erudition unit Jingyuan definitely has the best stats because if you compare him to the four stars he is better in terms of stats and if you compare him to himiko himiko has a higher attack but a way lower stats in hp and defense and also a lower stat in speed so in terms of stats distribution Jingyuan is definitely the best one of his class and based on comparing him to the other damage dealers like CD or Yanqing, Jingyuan is basically a tanky damage dealer which is better if your opponent is hitting super hard whereas Yanqing and CD they are more like a glass cannon character where you can use them to settle for quick fights. So moving on to the skills portion, after using his technique, Jingyuan's lightning lord attack count in the first turn increases by 3 which is helpful in boosting his overall damage as we will talk about the lightning lord's ability later on. So for his basic attack, Jingyuan deals lightning damage equals to 50, 110% of his attack to a single enemy which is subjected to change on official release and it's the standard numbers for your normal attack for most units. His main skill, Rifting Zenith, allows him to deal lightning damage equals to 50, 100, 110% of Jingyuan's attack to all enemies and increase his lightning loss attack count by 2 for the next turn. His ultimate known as the Lightbringer deals damage equals to 120, 200 and 216% of Jingyuan's attack to all enemies and increases Lightning Lord's attack count by 3 for the next turn. 
Okay, so we have come to Ting Yuan's most important kit, and that is his talent to summon a Lightning Lord. So I'm not going to talk about the details, but Lightning Lord is basically a separate unit that has its own base speed and attack count. So this attack count builds up from Ting Yuan's uh, main skill as well as ultimate. So more attack counts equals to more damage on this Lightning Lord itself. So each time the Lightning Lord's attack count increases by 1, the speed also increases by 10. So the build up of the attack count is very important in boosting the overall damage from this Lightning Lord itself. Also take note that at the end of the action from the Lightning Lord itself, the speed as well as the attack count of the Lightning Lord is reset to the base 60 and 3 base attack count. So if JY or Jingyuan dies in battle, the Lightning Lord will disappear and if Jingyuan is under status or control in the battle itself, the Lightning Lord is also unable to move. Okay, so if we take a look at the recommended relic set, I will say that um, I'll put them in priority. So number one, we run the four times ban of Sizzling Thunder, which basically is the standard stat for most lightning units, right? Lightning damage boost, as well as an attack boost whenever the wearer uses a skill. So this ability also buffs out the lightning lot because the lightning lot calculates its damage based on Jing Yuan's attack. So the boost after Jing Yuan uses his skill is also built on the Lightning Lord. So this set is perfect for Jing Yuan in terms of DPS output. And the second way to build him is the speedy DPS set. So you run the Musketeer set, which increases his attack as well as his speed. So this allows you to actually maybe do more hits in, right, with the likes of uh, Asta as well as Bronya's buff in order to build up more attack count on your Lightning Lord. So the other way I'll recommend you guys to build him is to run a mix between the Musketeer and the Band set because having maximum damage buff, attack damage as well as lightning damage allows you to do quite a substantial amount of damage as well. So the last one is the Breaker route which I don't really recommend because Jing Yuan is an AoE damage dealer which wants to hit as hard as possible but he does have a very high attack count from the Lightning Lord as well as an AoE damage dealing kit which allows him to break pretty easily if you are fighting multiple lightning weak units so the recommended stats for tingyuan itself for these four sets will be number one crit rate and crit damage percentage pretty standard stuff then number two speed number three attack percentage and effect resistance so the reason why i recommended effect resistance is because having a little bit of effect resistance could be very helpful from preventing tingyuan from being crowd control so as you guys know from the talent itself the Lightning Lord is unable to move if Jing Yuan is under any form of crowd control. So even though Jing Yuan's damage output mainly comes from the Lightning Lord, keeping Jing Yuan healthy and not binded by crowd control is very important to keep the Lightning Lord's attack going. Okay, so moving to the planar ornament sets, I'll say there's only two sets which are really good for him. Number one, the Inert Sao Sote set, which provides the standard crit rate percentage for Jing Yuan while offering a boost in ultimate damage and follow-up damage which is key to his kit. Then we have the Space Dealing Station, which deals a uh, raw damage percentage boost, which means more damage for Jing Yuan overall. And also, this set will require a little bit of speed tuning because Jing Yuan's base stat is only 99, so you need to build up another 21 speed stat on his other equipments in order for him to get the bonus attack percentage boost. So the recommended stats for these equipments are Lightning Damage Boost for stacking of damage, Attack Percentage for more attack equals to more damage and a little bit of break effect boost if you're able to get them but it's not the priority for the main stats so do take note on that now moving towards the light cone recommendation i think it's really hard to replace jing yuan's main light cone before dawn because the boost that before dawn offers for jing yuan is massive not only does it boost his crit damage as well as his skill and ultimate damage it also allows him to prop a follow-up damage buff which is crucial for his kit because lightning lord basically deals follow-up damage so he is definitely gonna need his uh, own light cones for maximum dps effect however if you were to choose from other erudition light cones herta milky way is also pretty decent but it is only really good if you're facing a large numbers of enemies so it's a little less consistent for herta's card it is decent it allows him to increase his follow-up damage and also even more follow-up damage if the opponent's hp is below a certain threshold and lastly ting Chet set is okay and the damage boot is actually quite optimal but you probably need to keep up your energy in order for him to achieve the maximum effect from this light cone itself now as for the other four star light cones i think they're not bad 
but for the two that requires you to kill the enemy they are not that good unless you are using Jingyuan for farming because you need to kill the enemy in order for the buff to proc so if your enemies are very tanky he doesn't kill them that easily then he doesn't keep that buff going consistently as for serve house card I think Jingyuan's whole kit is based a lot around his Lightning Lord, so buffing his ultimate and skill damage is definitely appreciated, but it's not the best way to buff Jingyuan up. Moving to team building, number one team that I'll recommend is obviously the Hyper Carry Shred, showcased by Uncle Jing, running Jingyuan, Qingyun, Bronya for the attack buff on your carry, and then running one healer in order to provide some sort of sustain in a long drawn out battle. So that is the hyper carry team number one. Number two, you can run the standard single carry with tank build, which runs a tanker as well as two support units for sustain as well as more consistent damage output because your team don't die that easily you have a tank that redirects damage which allows Jingyuan to sort of uh, output damage more consistently and deal damage in a more consistent manner so the last team that you can think of is only if you have all the stats built up on all your team and that is the ultra damage build so this one basically runs Jingyuan with three other damage buffer or Pela for defense reduction in order for maximum damage output from Jingyuan so if you guys don't have the units that are stated on screen right now, I think it's perfectly fine. You can definitely build the team around the idea of Jingyuan being the carry and then providing support for him, increasing his overall damage output, increasing his overall sustain, redirecting damage away from him in order to do your team building for Jingyuan itself. Now between the light cone and unit banner, let's compare them to do some like brief discussion. For those of you guys who are slightly limited in budget and can only go for one side of things to decide which one to go for. So for the light cones, we have um, the March light cone, day one of my new life, which is an amazing light cone for all the preservation unit. We have only silence remains, which is really good for hunt unit because you want to fight as little targets as possible and the boost is actually pretty consistent if you're doing so in terms of the different battle and we also have Asta's card which is a uh, rendezvous planetary rendezvous so this one is not bad if you're putting it on Asta so overall the whole light cone lineup in the light cone pool is amazing like it is very very balanced out but some may argue that before dawn is actually way more important than Jingyuan having higher Eidolon levels because before dawn is amazing in boosting different aspects in terms of damage so crit damage skill and ultimate damage as well as follow-up damage are all greatly increased by before dawn and if you do decide to super impose the card the scaling of this card itself is amazing because by the end you scale it to super impose five the numbers coming out from all the boosts are basically close to double which is great value in terms of returns so that is for the light cone aspects and comparing it to the banner itself the banner is also really crazy because we have one of the best buffer in the game in the boosted rate ting yun so he she is definitely needed for you to build your hyper carry because she offers amazing single target buff and we have much which is an amazing dispeller a taunter being a preservation unit as well as a shooter for your team as well lastly we have shu sheng together with ting yun which are both top tier damage dealers in the game so all these boosted units as well as light cones they are amazing if you're talking about how universal and useful in terms of uh equipping the cards to the erudition class i think before dawn is definitely one of the best cards for erudition units like all or in fact i think most of the erudition unit will benefit from this card so if you want to build up other erudition unit while having a massive boost to your uh erudition unit power then pulling for the card will definitely be better but personally speaking i think jingyuan's better is overall better in terms of value because the boosted units are all very useful in helping you push through various contents right you have a buffer you have a tanker shielder recovery guy and you have a aoe damage dealer which is jingyuan himself so the unit banner i'll say slightly edges out in this comparison below are some reasons to pull or invest in general jingyuan So how worthy is Jingyuan potentially? He's basically going to be the powerhouse for the erudition class which is currently lacking a lot of firepower, 
where you compare them to the other damage related classes like the hunt as well as the destruction class he has many different combo potential in the stimulated universe which i'll later showcase after i get my hands on him so overall he is definitely a good unit in the damage compartment because of his ability to deal amazing aoe damage as well as single target damage coming up from the lightning lord ability However, being a Lightning Erudition unit, he is going to compete for resources with Servile and if you already have her invested for your various contents such as your Memory of Chaos, such as your Simulated Universe Farming, then his Light Cone will probably be the better choice in this banner rotation for you guys to invest in. Okay, so I've been saving a lot for his banner because a lot of my game theme revolves around getting Jingyuan as well as getting multiple copies of Ting Yun moving towards in the later part of the game. So I'll definitely be doing a massive pull stream for him. So do stay tuned for that. And thank you very much for watching. Do remember to like and subscribe in order to see more from the channel. And let me know down in the comment section below if you have any points of improvements or other points you want me to talk about moving forward in this series itself. I'll see you guys again at my stream and I'll see you guys again in my next video. Bye guys!